everybody out there in Facebook land, uh, whatever social media platform you are watching us on today. Uh, this is Shannon coming to you live from the Albuquerque Espado Chamber campus with some of my uh, friends and colleagues with us today. Um, Joey Gutierrez, who is our membership manager, and John uh, Lewis. And because we're talking Hispanic heritage, it's Juan Luis for the next hour, who <laughs> works as a program uh, manager and uh, in our Convention and Tourism Department. Uh, gentlemen, will you tell us a little bit about what you do here at the Chamber? John, you want to kick it off? Sure, sure. This is John. I, um, I Juan. was... Uh, Juan. I've been, I won. Juan Luis, because it's Hispanic heritage. Yes, yes. I have been with the chamber three years and I uh, love every minute of it. There's never a dull moment here. I work in the convention and tourism department. I liaise on behalf of the chamber to the native community and uh, try to put heads in beds. That's our motto here. Uh, we work in uh, with all the hoteliers and, and uh, travel companies. So we try to bring as many people as we can to Albuquerque. Thank you, John, Juan, Luis, Juan. and Joey Gutierrez. You are next. <laughs> That's right. I'm Joey Gutierrez. I'm uh, the membership manager here at the Chamber. I've been here for a year, and it's been a fun year. Um, the one thing I am excited about, though, is I've never experienced the major event season. So uh, I think Hispanic Heritage is going to be a great kickoff for me on that. I'm excited for that one. Um, but yeah, my job here is to take care of our members, bring in new members, um, help events to help our members and just be a resource for our community and our membership and partner with everybody here at the chamber as far as my colleagues and make sure that we're all one team getting, getting things done for you guys. So I, I'm excited. I've never experienced this, but I'm feeding off Shannon's enthusiasm right now. So, Well, Joey, I have to tell you, everybody around here knows we love Gala. February 12, 2022, save the date. You heard it here first. That will launch here pretty soon. Um, we're very excited, but I have to tell you, Joey, you're going to find out here in the next uh, few weeks how passionate I am about this is my absolute favorite event because we honor <clears throat> our membership and what they do in the community and what they do to support the Hispano Chamber year round. <clears throat> we have an incredible group of nominees this year. So I'm so excited to get into that and spend a few minutes talking about who they are and what they do and how they have supported uh, the community over this past crazy, crazy COVID year. But before we get started, I want to tell you a little bit about the event details. So this is your official save the date. The Albuquerque Hispano Chamber of Commerce Hispanic Heritage Awards are taking place live and in person this year, October 15th, Friday night. Uh, with our friends at Hotel Albuquerque in Old Town. And we really appreciate Heritage, Heritage Hotels and all their support. Um, so we're excited about that. <clears throat> so to tell you a little bit about the evening, um, we will be opening the doors from six to seven, which will be our cocktail hour. And then uh, the uh, uh, banquet doors will open at about 645, 630, somewhere in there for you to take your seat because from seven to nine is the actual award ceremony, which includes a fabulous dinner. And it also includes incredible entertainment. So uh, we'll talk about that here in a minute. <clears throat> and then we're usually done right around the nine o'clock uh, hour. And from there, we have a big after party and we celebrate uh, usually at Q Bar <clears throat> with uh, the winners and uh, the nominees. And it's just a great way uh, to uh, get together and celebrate each other and their accomplishments and their businesses. And of course, it's great networking. I mean, no matter what, it's fantastic networking. And so um, we're excited. That's what the evening is going to look like. The tickets are officially on sale. Uh, they are $100 each or a table of 10 for 1000 I will suggest if you buy, um, if you're going to come, gather a group together, put your monies in one pot <coughs> and purchase a table. It's much easier to seat you as a whole group closer and in certain areas than it is those onesies. So think about that a little bit. If you're like, oh, I can gather up uh, business owners, 10 friends to come together. It is a fun night. It's about business kind of <clears throat> business dress. I would say, um, you know, a suit, um, a nice pair of slacks or a, or a nice dress, uh, whatever. It's not formal, formal like Kayla, but it is, it is nice. <clears throat> and the food is delicious. Now, John, we have uh, our menu, which will be coming out soon, so I can't really say what it is right now, but have you ever had a bad meal at Hotel Albuquerque? 
No, I haven't. Uh, they're, they're, uh, they have some great chefs on staff. And, and like you were saying, the networking is just phenomenal. You know, we, we've been locked up for the last year and a half. So these are uh, one of the uh, first events to really get together at, at um, this size. You know, uh, what do we have? Six, 700 people? We do. We do. Yeah. Great, great time to get together and see your friends. <clears throat> it is. And, you know, we sell out every year. So my suggestion is if you are uh, looking to do this uh, and be part of this incredible group of accomplishments and achievers in our community, get your tickets now. Uh, those links will be available here at the end of this <clears throat> webinar session um, as soon as we uh, make voting go live, which will happen right after this. So, John, I just want to kind of talk about a couple of things that are really, really important. Uh, first and foremost, I always want to thank our event sponsors. We we don't we can't do anything around here without supporters and our event sponsors really really um, are part of what we do daily here and we are very thankful to them. So <clears throat> want to just say thank you to Southwest Airlines who has been a supporter of the chamber for decades and uh, we really really appreciate them. Also want to thank um, the KRQE Media Group, who is our official media sponsor for this event. They have been fantastic, and um, we're excited to share the winners. Um, <clears throat> also want to thank, of course, Hotel Albuquerque, who's been a great partner. Um, the Albuquerque Journal, who is a partner as well. And so we'll be getting a great uh, one pager to thank all the winners and our category sponsors and event sponsors after the event. Um, New Mexico Ford Dealers who has also been a huge contributor of the chamber for, for well over a couple of decades now. And Syndicate Media, who is really responsible for a lot of the production that we'll be doing this year on our videos. And uh, we just really want to thank uh, Julian and his team. So, uh, oh, and also Candelaria Law, Jacob Candelaria, um, new to our team this year, but an incredibly great supporter of the Chamber and our events and our mission um, and our Hispanic Heritage Awards. So I want to say thank you so much to, you know, to Jacob. That Shannon, this whole group, this whole group you see here on the screen here has been tremendous through the last 18 months through COVID. They have really come together with us as partners and really helped us through the difficult times to highlight our um, hospitality industry that has really struggled. So we give them the kudos. Thank you for bringing that up because a lot of these um, companies did come through in a time when hospitality and hospitality still is on the mend um, and in the middle of recovery. So thank you to these sponsors. Um, I want to talk for just a minute about the awards themselves. Now, <clears throat> I'm not sure, Joey, if you've had an opportunity to see these incredible awards, but they are commissioned uh, by Sean, for, by us to Sean Wells, who is a Santero and a, a Spanish colonial artist who does incredible woodwork um, and painting. And along with her brother, they do beautiful tin work. And so these are one of a kind of awards. You won't find them anywhere else. So a huge shout out to Sean and um, her team that puts this together. We are thankful that you are back on board this year and we appreciate your artistry and you know Sean is a previous uh, recipient of these awards so she's very um, grateful and thankful to be continuing as part of our team here to put these on and uh, I also want to talk for a minute uh, John because you're very involved in this piece of it the entertainment this year now for those of you that have never been to a Hispanic Heritage Awards uh, banquet before <coughs> award ceremony if you will we we don't wait to do our entertainment we open with our entertainment. So the first few minutes is this really impactful, something fun. And we always and forever will have the theme of converging of the cultures. We're a very tricultural state here. And we <clears throat> are so thankful for how Native American, Hispanic, the Mexican cultures, you know, all come together and really build us uh, in, inside the community and then what we do and how we support our community. And so we, want, we really want to highlight that. And so every year we do this really great opening <clears throat> to mix our culture with music or artistry or dance or song or spoken word or, you know, we've done so many different things in the past. But this year, John, we are fusing culture and fashion. Sure. Exactly. So I'm very excited. Um, will you tell us who is in charge of our entertainment this year and helping us pull our cocktail entertainment and our dinner entertainment together? Uh, we are working with Danette Lovato, 
she is helping us with this. And you know what? Uh, what's really awesome is that we carry that theme throughout the night from the very beginning when we bring in the the um, entertainment through the through the show. Um, we we do a, a a quick show, but we carry that theme throughout the night, and it's really awesome. So yes, we're bringing in uh, Danette Lovato. She's working with us. She's going to be helping us with uh, all of the entertainment and identifying the three in those cultures who can come in and and uh, present some great entertainment for our um, for our, our networking and throughout the show as well. So, John, I, I can't I, you know, I have to say this out loud because I can't hold it in because I like I said, this is my favorite event. And I'm so excited because I get the to sit on the, you know, sit on the shoulders of you guys while you're in here talking and I get to everything that's happening <clears throat> this year. We're going to be bringing in um, a Hispanic and Native American and Mexican designer, yes. clothing designer that's going to be set to music to talk about the importance of how design can can um, support culture and support what they do, their family, their community. And um, some of these designers are new and some of them are very, very seasoned. And so they're, they're going to be a mix of sets. I just want to announce that um, Adaro Romero um, will be uh, showing off her new designs that she's putting together as we speak. Uh, we have a new designer, Rocio Olguin, who's going to be doing something very special. And John, um, I'd love to give you the floor for a minute to talk about our Native American designer who we got to spend some time with recently at a, at a, at a conference in Las Vegas, and he is phenomenal. Yes, actually, it's a couple. It's Lauren and Valentina Aragon. Uh, their company is called Aquanav because they are a mix of Akama and Navajo descent. So they're very, very talented. And uh, you very. get to stick around afterwards and talk to them and see more of their fashions after the show. So it's going to be a great night for fashion. Well, you know, and I think that's going to be awesome. We're going to make sure that they have a booth space for the after party to show their designs. And it's going to be a wonderful evening. Again, I can't encourage you guys enough to get out and support. Tickets are on sale. You can find them by going to our website at www.ahcnm.org. Click on events. Click on Hispanic Heritage 2021. Read all about the event and what, what it means to us in the community. The categories are listed in there and you can vote now or you can purchase tickets now all on that page. <clears throat> You'll also be able to find the link to purchase tickets inside of this post here and you'll also find it in our uh, weekly highlights and you'll find it in random uh, weekly newsletters that we'll be sending standalone emails to remind you to vote um, and so I think it's time I think it's time that we unveil these nominees what do you guys say yeah I believe so so let's go to uh, the marketing gods behind the screen and behind the scene <laughs> and let's kick this off. So, John, a few years back, I want to say three or four years, we recognized how much our membership had changed. And we looked into what were some of the emerging industries and some of the emerging cultures. And, you know, part of what we do here at the Hispano Chamber is our engagement with Native American Hispanic um, culture, businesses, and tourism from around the world. And so we thought it absolutely appropriate to focus a particular category on our native owned businesses. And so I would like to start by saying thank you to ACIMA, that's A-K-I-M-A, Judy and team for being a contributor this year, our sponsor of this event. Um, a shout out uh, to, to ACIMA once again. And the nominees are Blue Bison, Sippy Board of Regents and Exhibit Solutions. So um, I'm going to start and then I want you guys to jump in and, and I and just let's share what we know um, because, you know, we know a lot about these uh, particular nominees and, and we don't always cross paths every day team to know what's going on. So I want to start with um, Gina Yule at Exhibit Solutions. Now, Gina has been a member of the chamber for probably 20 plus years an amazing, amazing Native American woman-owned business who does incredible 
printing and uh, trade show displays and awards and swag and you name it. Uh, Gina has been so active this year in continuing to build her business during COVID. She's been uh, an attendee and a graduate of our procurement program. And Gina's a phone call away if we ever need anything. So congratulations, Gina. You know, I've known Gina um, since she first started her business and I've seen her in the early years struggle as she uh, you know, built her business. And she uh, is a graduate of the 8A program and just very successful, she and her husband, and they just have done very, very well for themselves. And you gotta give, take off your hat to them. They've really done a, a good job in representing that industry. Well, good luck, Gina, and uh, we, we hope the best for you. Get the boat out. Um, Joey, <clears throat> now I know uh, that you have been working with SIPI, um, mm -hmm. uh, Southwest Indian Polytechnical Institute, and they have done so much uh, this year during COVID. And I know we're doing some partnerships with them and some intern stuff. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, what you're working on and, and what we know about SIPI? Yeah, so I have a Bill over there and Abby, um, Abby especially, she is at everything. I feel like every time we have an event, Abby pops up and if, whether it's our event or some other event, I see her everywhere. So she's definitely out there um, getting their name out there, but Sippy's doing a lot of big things. Uh, COVID hit, you know, the Native American community really, really hard. Um, so they had to pivot around it much like we did and get, you know, get classes to these kids online. And they're still looking to bring more people in, but they're they're working with certain uh, companies around here for placement, for trade and stuff after they graduate. So SIPI is just doing a lot of big things in uh, the Native American community. And I, I love what they do. I've worked with them in the past. Now that they're uh, members of ours and they've been really involved, it's great to have them there. But Abby's a go-getter. Bill's lucky to have her on the team. We'll see her around everywhere. Trust me. Well, we hope to see them uh, sitting and getting ready for their award. Um, <clears throat> I would also like to introduce our third nominee, Blue Bison, which is Sean Bata, who's been a member for a couple of years. But let me tell you, he has not missed anything. They have been involved, also graduates of our procurement uh, program. They work in remediation. They work in construction. And, and uh, John, I'm, I'm sure you have a few things to say about Sean and team, but we're so thankful that they've been so engaged because that's the purpose of what we do here at the Chamber offer opportunity, resources, connections, and Sean and team have definitely taken advantage of that. They work with Tashina, um, who is uh, overseeing our procurement program on a regular basis. Um, and John, you're also in that in that area. Yes, you know, uh, Blue Bison is an, an industry, um, of course, remediation, environmental engineering. That's, that's a real tough, um, tough industry to be in. And I, I, too, have to take my hat off to them because they've really been able to carve out a good business for themselves and um, um, kudos to them uh, and good luck to them. You're on mute. Well, there you go. I was coughing. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you again to everybody in our Native American category and to all of our nominees. Uh, next category. The drum roll, please. It is. Oh, our health and wellness category. Okay, we, this has been around from the from the inception, from the beginning of time. Uh, this is a great category. There's always so many choices in this category. And so we're very excited this year to narrow it down to those that have worked really hard during COVID and have worked to continue to build their business and help the community. So I uh, want to say thank you to Bank of America. I want to say thank you to Paul uh, for your support and Nikki Mitchell, who never fails, who always returns calls. She's so responsive uh, from Bank of America. We thank you from the chamber for all your incredible support um, throughout the years in uh, supporting uh, Hispanic small businesses in the community. And so this year's nominees for the Health and Wellness Business of the Year are Academy Dental, F45 Training, and Lumen wellness. So I have to say there is so much opportunity here and so much to talk about. And I think maybe we should start with, let's start with, um, um, let me see, I'm pulling up my information here. You know, I wanted Academy Dental. So, uh, um, okay. So Academy Dental, Gabe Gonzalez. Now I have to tell you, 
something about Academy Dental that I don't think everybody really knows is that uh, they have supported the chamber for, for a very long time. They have been longtime members, um, at least five or six years now. But, you know, uh, the last, uh, what, two, three years that we've done X marks the spot, they are the first people to drop off thousand dollar teeth whitening packages for all of our X mark the spot landowners and pilots it's been so amazing and uh, they have continued to to build and do the work in the community during COVID so I really want to say thank you to uh, uh, Gabe Gonzalez and team and Academy Dental um, John and I'm sorry I interrupted you no 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 I was going to say um, um, I was just going to mention that uh, you know these businesses have really struggled themselves when uh, COVID came along and we really have to honor them for, for really going the extra mile to keep their businesses open and keep their employees um, working. You are absolutely right. I think that is a huge, a huge, huge, hugely important. Um, also want to give a big shout out to um, F45 training. Now, we all know in the beginning of um, COVID, I guess you could say, it was very difficult because one of the problems that you have is gyms were those ones that, you know, they were, you couldn't go, they were closed and, you know, masks and all this crazy stuff. And they fought hard. Mm -hmm. They have fought really, really hard. And so I want to give um, a big shout out to um, F45 uh, for everything that they've been doing in the community and for everything that they have been uh, pushing hard for. And um, I think that, you know, Jeremy Harris and team, they have, you know, we did their ribbon cutting right before uh, yeah. COVID. I, again, but they adapted and they continue to be strong. And, you know, uh, F45, I, I don't know all of the details, but I know it has something to do with uh, Mark Wahlberg. I think that that's his brand. And I know these are franchises. And we have to remember that franchise owners are individual business owners. They've got to do the work. And, you know, they're supporting local community by hiring and keeping the businesses local and so I want to say a big shout out to to them for doing that so uh, congratulations and continue to build and uh, I want to also say our third nominee Lumen Optimal Wellness um, we've met with them <coughs> a few times they're doing great things now everybody sees them as a float spa but boy oh boy do they do so much more they do health mental health wellness they do very specific wellness treatments <clears throat> for um, um, like continued, like diabetes and all kinds of great stuff. So I would encourage you to get a hold of Dan and team over at Lumen Optim Optimal Wellness. Like I said, they're not just a float spa. They do so much more. And I think that is super important. And yeah. they are pretty new to the world, less than a couple years old, but they are really moving along. So um, they also were ones that we had a ribbon cutting right before um, COVID. So we're yeah. proud for staying open and working hard. And Dan, owned, uh, he kind of owns that home building. So I, I give Dan a lot of credit because every business that's in that <laughs> building has been successful through COVID. And a lot of it has to do with, you know, the property management and stuff. So not only has Lumen uh, done well, the shop has done well, the tattoo parlor, like he's just an incredible guy. And for what they do for athletes, they're working with UNM athletes at New Mexico Ooh. United. It's state-of-the-art training there that's tailored to them. And then they also do mental training. Some what? crazy stuff. I found out, you know, some stuff about myself mm -hmm. mentally that maybe I just keep, but <laughs> the fact that they were able to point it out. <laughs> Now, but Lumen does it, and then they're also big sponsors. They've given a lot of prizes for us for our certain events. So, well, uh, again, thank you to all of the nominees in the health and wellness category. Um, who's next? It's getting exciting. Ooh. Next, we have technology business of the year. Now, again, this is a um, a, a, a category that's been around from the beginning because technology is so, so important. And um, I want to say um, what we're going to at the very end, I'm going to come back and, and say thank you to last year's winners. I got sidetracked. I got so excited about talking about um, uh, the current nominees, but we, we do want to give a shout out to last year's winners because they didn't get the opportunity that uh, the rest are going to get this year. So we're going to give them a little love at the event this year. Uh, but <clears throat> for now, um, the, uh, the technology, um, 
category, we would like to thank our friends at Perican Enterprises. That is Frank Garcia and team, incredible team who actually work in the technology space um, in government contracting. And if anybody knows about technology and aerospace and construction and managed services and everything else that they do, um, it is the team at Perican. So thank you to Frank for everything you do, your huge, huge support of the chamber and um, the incredible ideas we get to spin off each other on a regular basis. Shannon, so, yes. I, I'd like to say that this, you know what, these three um, nominees are very worthy. And this is, this is a very, very competitive field right here. These three are very worthy. And I would, uh, you know, say if you, you know, work with one of these, vote for them, vote for them, because these, these are three great companies, they do great work in the community, and we really need to get behind them. Well, so the nominees for technology business of the year is, are, I should say are, because there's three of them, uh, Ambitions Consulting Group, Artem Technologies, and Team Technologies. Now, this group, <laughs> like uh, uh, John said, they're pretty amazing. These are, these our businesses that are have been in business a very long time are very well embedded in the community and and have a, a really big uh, have played a big role in what we've done here at the chamber. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start with um, Bob Sachs and Team Technologies. Now Bob is on the cutting edge of incredible work that they are doing. Um, you will have to stay tuned to find out more at the actual Hispanic Heritage Awards. Uh, but Bob has been a, a member of our Hispano Chamber Board, a chairman of our board. He has been um, an integral supporter over the years, a member for over 20 years. Uh, Bob Saxon team, thank you so much from us to you and everything you do for the community. Um, and we appreciate your continued support. Also want to say uh, next on the list is um, Artem Technologies. Now, Artem, uh, that's uh, Brian and Nicole, um, have been members for over eight years. And uh, they are huge supporters, you know, golf tournaments and sponsorships. And But I have to tell you, the work that they do and the clients that they're helping make a difference. If you're a business out there that is looking to make sure you're up to date in the world of technology, cybersecurity, infrastructure, what have you, this is your team. And I have to tell you guys, each one of these um, nominees, they do something different. They don't necessarily cross each other. You know, some of them work in the federal government space. Some of them work individual with the community. And let's move over to Ambitions Consulting Group. That's Lucas, Rael, and team. I mean, Lucas has been a member for about five, six years. But I have to tell you, um, he has been a part of the community for much longer than that. And he has such a great story how he got started. And it, it, it really started with document storage. And that's why they're a solutions group. They help you with your document storage. So if you're one of those companies that's renting storage units to put your boxes in for audit, you need to get a hold of Lucas and team because they have a way to put all of this on hard drive for you. We use them. We appreciate them. Um, they do printing. They do graphic design. They do help desk. So if you are a company that needs, you know, a year round, or I should say daily, 24-hour um, care on your computers, you know, it's a phone, you pick it up and they help you with that. Um, it's incredible. And not to mention, um, so far this year, Ambitions is our first um, large uh, gala sponsor. So I want to say thank you for not just supporting us but lucas for everything you give there is not a time where they don't call lucas and say hey i have a client that needs this can you help him out and he doesn't even charge them and i mean it really is about what you you get what you give and these three companies are about that so i'm so privileged to know every one of them where it really started just throwing it out not with document solutions but at manal of course he is a graduate of manal <laughs> He's an alum, same with Loretta Armenta. We are all alums of Manal, but Lucas sat on their board. He did the same thing there that he's done for us. He donated his time. He donated his business. Uh, he, he's just, he's amazing. I, I have the most respect for Lucas. It was a pleasure uh, looking up to him while he was in high school. Um, I was in mid school and he graduated my, my uncle. So Lucas is, he's that kind of guy. Well, I, go. I'm sorry, go ahead, John. <laughs> I'd like to also emphasize that, um, you know, we when we get, people call into the chamber asking for us to refer somebody 
we of course we refer our members and our artem ambitions team technologies if you you know um do you service have the service our members need then we we would definitely um put you out in front that's what we do here at the chamber yeah, definitely. And, and you know, we, we have these lists that we send out, so we don't pick one or the other. If you fit in that category, we make sure that they get all the possibilities and you get to call um, as the consumer and, and work with and choose who works for your company. So once again, thank you to all the nominees in the technology category. Oh, Angelique, who's next? I'm getting excited. <laughs> Fun category this year, our immigrant owned business of the year. Now we tweak this a little bit. We had been doing our international uh, business of the year, but you know, we noticed that this year there was such a huge uh, come together in our immigrant business community. Um, some of these immigrants have <laughs> the most incredible stories and they need to be told and they need to be shared. And we want you as the public and the consumer to patron their businesses and support them. So, th and I also wanna say a huge thank you to Modril Sperling Law, who is a huge supporter of this category. Um, we can't do it without you, Michelle uh, Hernandez and team, Michelle, you know, previous uh, chair, woman of our board, a previous board member, and of course our general counsel. And this is, again, Modril is an incredible supporter do and the small business work that we do here. Immigrant owned business of the year nominees are Sombra, Doral Motors, and XY Staffing. So I have to tell you guys, <clears throat> this goes way back. Uh, some of these are incredible uh, stories, and I wish we had the time to tell them all today, but we're just going to do some brief, some, some small briefs. So I want to start with um, uh, Yudiana Arias, who is the owner of XY Staffing. Now, Yudi came to us, oh, I can't even tell you, it's been five years ago or so, and um, was looking for a way to build her business. She had staffing background and she had come up with the concept. So she joined our program called Emprendedores, which is a, a business accelerator for Spanish speaking business owners to help them get to the next level, understand what they need to do. Since that time, Emprendedores has taken on a whole new life. We now have levels one, two, and three. We're working with community partners, including the Mexican consulate. And we're gonna work hard to help provide the business resources um, in this community. And Yudi has stepped up. Yudi also stepped up this year and um, is, is helping us with staffing because that's what her specialty is. And she knows exactly what we need. She's able to get bilingual callers, bilingual staff where is needed. And so to find out more about Yudi, you're going to have this all on the platform, but good luck, Yudi. We appreciate all of your support in the community and all of your support here at this final chamber. Uh, next, we have uh, Doral Motors. Now, Y'all know we love us some Jose Carlos Vaso. He's amazing. He has such an incredible story. Peruvian immigrant who uh, knows everything and anything about cars. He has an incredible car lot. And what I love, and you guys know this, is that you can find Doral Motors anywhere in the city because he brands his cars. <laughs> so, you know, they're the gladiators and the yellow United cars. And, you know, he's the, the uh, part of the part of the um the um, United group, the, the curse, uh, the fan club, if you will, that supports all the teams and uh, the, the team before all the games. And he's incredible. He has an incredible stake in the community. His family is here. Um, there, there's just so much that we can say about him and we're excited. We hope that you guys read his story. He's, he's such a great um, inspiration to everybody to keep going. And um, he does have a pretty large social media following. So uh, that might work to his advantage. And then the last team that we would like to talk about is our friends at Sombra. Um, you know, Sombra during COVID, um, you know, they go by Sombra Natural Wellness Products, but what they're really known for is the Soar No More product. And I, I, oh, I wish that everybody could go to their manufacturing plant here in Albuquerque. There's three buildings the size of Albuquerque. They're so big and beautiful. And, you know, Alfredo Cortazar, who is the owner he has such an incredible story, how he came here, you know, decades ago from Mexico and how he, you know, he came and he built as an engineer, as a scientist and really 
fought hard until one day he came up with Sornomore, which is a product that is sold globally, worldwide, manufactured right here out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. The economic development and the impact that he has on our community is incredible. And I, I just want to give a shout out to his team, Lisa Mascareñas, who's uh, been amazing over the past five, six years of working with them. And also John Martinez, who's on our board, but also um, uh, working with them in, in business development. And it's just so exciting to have them involved um, with us. And they gave out all their little products the minute COVID hit and we needed PPE, they were the first ones here. They brought us thousands of products to give away, huge supporters of the community and what we do, still giving away. You know, the other day they, you could put your name in, you could get the latest and greatest uh, sanitizer that has like a, a lotion-y uh, product in it to keep your hands from getting so dry. You know how dry our hands are with COVID. And so I can't say enough about Sombra and what they do for the community and they deserve this. And Alfredo deserves this and they all do. Jose Carlos and UD too. So you guys have to get out. You have to do the research and you have to pick who works for you. Shannon, what I'd like to what I'd like to add about those three is that they're very well embedded in their community. They they help their community in various ways. They're they're in different uh, fields, different communities, but they are all very rooted in their communities and they they do a lot to help. So uh, we have to give them their props too. Well, and they're and they're super, you know, important to what we do at the chamber and have been for many years. And um, you know, I just want to give a real quick shout out right here to Rocio Ogin, who has just really been instrumental in our La Hermandad uh, program and pulling together our immigrant business owners that maybe we don't even know their story and know who they are. And she's been pulling that group together to help us get the awareness out um, and, and really helping them to do business on the other side of the bridge, if you will, and vice versa, and, and making sure that we're just one big community and we're not separated. So um, I'm excited about that category. Can't wait to see what happens. Uh, next, next category. Ooh, nonprofit of the year. So first and foremost, want to give a big shout out to Verizon. Verizon, one of our corporate sponsors. Thank you, Verizon, for always remembering us and always giving us that support. We appreciate you. And uh, we're very excited to be able to um, share um, what you do and how you support us. So thank you to Verizon. Um, and, and, and Verizon supporting us right now. I, uh, if Angelique can speak to the, if anybody can speak to it, it's Angelique. Uh, there, you know, our, our technology that's on our tablets and, and our you know, iPads and all the different things we do. So thank you to Bryson. Um, the nonprofit uh, organization of the year nominees are Adelante Development Center, NABO, National Association of Women Business Owners, and the Libra Initiative. So, wow, I don't know what to say. I don't even know where to start. There's so much to, to start with. So I'm going to kind of just start first with Adelante. Um, Adelante has been a, a member for decades, first and foremost. Um, they are never not available um, <clears throat> they have an incredible program. They work with the community and individuals with disabilities. They are placing them in jobs. The work that they do, the passion and the work that they do in the community is second to none. Let's say that after most, most important. But Mike Kibitz, who has just recently retired out of that position, has really, really been um, instrumental in the work that we've done over the years with the chamber. He has connected us to so many nonprofits, opportunities. He has incredible vision and ideas. And I just want to say thank you to Mike and now Jill Beats and team. We appreciate your decades of support with the chamber, whether it be um, you know monetary support or labor support or whatever it is that, that we get from you. You deserve it. We appreciate you. Um, so thank you to Adelante Development Center. Uh, we should all be supporting them in some way or another for what they do in the community. Now I want to talk about NABO because so you know NABO is interesting because they are one of the one of the organizations that are I guess you could say that they are um, nationwide but what they have is they have um, local chapters. <clears throat> so we work with the local chapter this year's president um, Yvonne Wilson um, and, and, and Christy, uh, Krista from last year, we, you know, we're excited about working with them. During the pandemic, we all learned to adjust to technology and support our businesses in the best way that we could. And NABO was no exception to the rule. They went full force um, in making sure that women-owned businesses had the resources and the support that they needed. We have um, 
an MOU. We are working with them on a regular basis through a women's program. We are very excited to have them on board and continue um, the years of support that they have given us. And we are excited to have them as part of this nomination this year because, wow, uh, they do a lot in the community and they super deserve uh, for the support that they give. Now, I'd like to talk for a moment about the Libra Initiative. So everybody kind of is like, Libra Initiative. Well, let me tell you, when I first got to the chamber five years ago, I worked with Mr. Montes. He was like one of my first connections. And we did so much together. We've had MOUs, we've done programs, we've done initiatives, we've done workshops, and we've done so much with the Libra Initiative. They're very focused in the Spanish speaking communities. Um, they uh, really talk about uh, government and lots of different things that are important to what they do. But most recently, the last couple of years, we have been able to do a trade program with them. Trade uh, builds New Mexico and trade helps economic development. And they really help to train uh, what import, export, um, USMCA, uh, the United States, Mexico, and Canada uh, new uh, contract is. For those companies and businesses that are interested in getting into trade or in trade and need more help, uh, you know, Libra and, and uh, Trade Builds New Mexico is the way to go. They are going to be able to help you, and we are looking for you to be part of this trade program and our upcoming webinar series. They also sponsor the chamber, they support the chamber in so many different ways membership, financial sponsorship. And so I, I literally can't say enough about um, Libra and Ruben and team. We're so excited. Uh, and uh, B says, hello, Ruben, just want you to know. And uh, so we look forward to years of continued partnership with Libra Initiative. Shannon, these, these three organizations are all models in the oh. business community here. And they offer so much. And I, I would implore everybody to take a look at their their organizations and see what they have to offer their businesses. Well, and these organizations, John, are literally decades old in the community. I mean, they they, they have the model down. They know their lane. They know their mission. They've learned to work and stay within their mission. I mean, we're nonprofit too. You know, we're economic development, but these groups really know what they're doing. And we are, again, I can't say enough, so thankful to partner with them on programs, initiatives, grants, whatever may be coming up and, and how we work with them. Good luck to all of them. Next. I know we're nearing the end. So I'm like, who's next? So many great. <laughs> There's so many. Oh, Great, great category. What are my favorite categories for sure? So I'm very excited. This is our Arts and Culture Organization of the Year, uh, sponsored by our friends at Coca-Cola. Um, I want to give a special shout out to Ish. This is all about you, my friend, Coca-Cola and Ish. And we really want to say thank you to our partners, our Coca-Cola partners all across the state and across the country. Uh, we could never do it without our corporate sponsors, as I said before. And so we're very excited about that. So the nominees for the Arts and Culture Organization of the Year are Dual Language Education of New Mexico, Golden Crown Panaderia, and Vara Winery and Distillery. So, wow. I don't really honestly even know where to begin with this, um, Joey, because this is an incredible group of people. So um, I think I want to go ahead and start with dual language. So for those of you that are not um, aware of dual language, um, they have an incredible mission, which is language education um, in the community. They have been partners with our uh, Convention and Tourism Department, again, for decades. Uh, they have an incredible event that we uh, support and or sponsor and vice versa throughout the year. David and team, we work with Leslie for many, many years. Uh, we are excited to have them recognize because language is part of our culture. Language is part of our arts and, and Spanish speaking, whether you Spanglish it or you're fluent or you're looking to learn, it's still part of our community. I mean, and it's just so growing too in importance here. Like we're seeing it every day. I feel bad because I'm learning now in my later years, but I have dual language there to help. So. And support it. So I'm excited. 
you know, and, and the fact that they're educating uh, teachers and I mean, it just it's it goes on and on and on. The information, of course, is going to be in their voting link. But I'm and I'm, I'm going to say I'm so absolutely honored to work with David and team. Uh, they were they were uh, residents here at the chamber for eons, um, moved out right, you know, during COVID. But they are back in the game and they are back to doing live events. And uh, again, the com the Convention and Tourism Department thanks you, David, and your team uh, at Dual Language for decades of support in the community. Um, it's just, it's incredible what you've done. Um, okay, so I got to be a little, a little biased here. Best empanadas in the whole city belong to Golden Crown Panaderia. Um, they are fantastic. Oh my goodness, they've been um, you know, at the corner, give or take a block off the corner of Mountain and 12th Street, I think, all their lives. And I have to tell you, um, the Morales family, Chris and Pratt, there is absolutely nowhere else I'd rather be at a lunchtime than hanging out with, with father and son uh, Morales team. They are a hoot. Um, you know, Chris is a professional dancer. <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to say that out loud. Don't, don't shoot me. Um, uh, and Pratt is just amazing to be able to sit there and have these conversations with them. And they are a family business. They are a legacy business. They are bakers. They are artists. They are artisans. Uh, you know, Pratt actually builds, I don't know if you know this, Joey, but he builds uh, bread sculptures. He's been recognized all over the world for his bread sculptures. did not know that. I eat their bread. <laughs> I, love, I love their green chili. Green like, chili, I was going to say the green chili loaf, green you know. The green chili bread they have is, yeah, you can't match that anywhere here. And then they also hosted our uh, What's Put in the Queue yep. with uh, AE, uh, Danielle Casey. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, and uh, that was amazing. Like they did, they were just so they were so welcoming. But yeah, that bread, that green chili bread's awesome. You know, and and, and like I said, it's just it's incredible uh, the the following they have in the community. And when you walk into their into their you know the their little their little space there where you can order yourself a a, a sandwich and a delicious empanada, uh, fresh off the fresh off the oven, if you will. Um, it's an incredible place to be. It makes me feel like I'm at my grandma's and I'm home. And uh, I just want to give a huge shout out to the Morales family who fought hard during COVID to stay open, to do delivery, to do takeout orders, whatever they needed to survive because they're a legacy business. They've been in this community for decades, decades, and decades. And we are so thankful to have them. They've been recognized in, probably at every level of every uh, food network show that is out there for um, the incredible work that they've done. So thank you to the Morales family. We look forward to seeing you on October 15th. And now we're talking about Vara Winery and Distillery. Oh, wow. This is a group that came in and took over, I guess you could say. Um, it has been an incredible ride with Xavier Zamparia and their partners and their um, team and everybody over at Vara. They have incredible stuff upcoming. Um, I just want to, I can't even say enough about what Vara has in the works. And what I do know is they have incredible spirits in wine. I know that they have a strong history and Spanish roots um, to Europe. And I know that what they're doing for the community is not just an economic driver uh, with the amount of uh, hiring that they're doing, the growth that they have in, in um, their business, but um, they will be uh, a, a permanent staple in the culture of Albuquerque, New Mexico, and our wine. Um, you know, we're coming up on the four, 400th anniversary of wine here in a few years. So um, I'm sure that they're going to all be ready for that. You know, since Vara joined, we've done several events with them. They've hosted events, they've donated, they've sponsored, they've supported. And I uh, can't say enough for um, Xavier and team over at Vara. Good luck. This is going to be a tight category this year. We're very excited. Uh, I think we only have one or two left. I was trying to count, but I was losing track because I was so excited about all the nominees. Next we have, oh, well, you guys know this is my favorite. <laughs> the woman-owned. They're all your favorite. <laughs> yeah, they're all my favorite. Woman-owned business of the year. You know what I love, John? I say that they're all my favorite because here's what happens. 
I get to listen on the phone sometimes when B is calling to let them know. I am copied on the emails, so I get to see the comments. And most important, when they walk in the night of the events, when they come up to you and they say, thank you, it makes me cry. They are so excited to be recognized and they're, that, that's what I get excited about. So I love them all, but I am a little impartial to some of the categories and this one I love, the Women Owned Business of the Year sponsored by our friends and our team at Wells Fargo. So we cannot say thank you enough to Joe Trimble, who has been an incredible supporter of the chamber, Wells Fargo for over 20 years. And, uh, you know, jo Joe is our incoming board chair. So we're all excited. He'll take over in 2022 to help guide us in our uh, economic policies and, and what we do um, as our board chair. So thank you to Wells Fargo and Joe. So the nominees for the Women Owned Business of the Year are El Bruno's Restaurante y Cantina, Sunny 505. And now I'm going to struggle with this because I didn't even have it before, but we have an all women owned law firm. Uh, uh, let's see, wish I could read it a little better. Huh? Basinger, Weidman's and Sale. Thank you. It's so light on my screen. I was going to go to my spreadsheet so I could read the names. And so we're very excited about all of them to be able to be part of this women-owned category. So a little bit about the category. Um, you know, women are, you know, uh, they're a backbone in what we do in the community. They're balancing, they're finding that work-life balance and they, they are pushing hard. And the nominees this year have done a lot during COVID. And even those that have said, I, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna make it or here they are. So I wanna start with um, El Bruno's. Now, everybody knows El Bruno's down on 4th Street, right past Paseo, right, that beautiful nestled off to the, to the east side of 4th Street there and the trees and the beautiful patio. And that is Hazel, Herrera, and team. It's pretty amazing. But I'm going to tell you guys a little story. I've known Hazel uh, since I was in high school, and it's because their daughter, I went to school with Melanie. Hi, Melanie, I'm giving you a shout out. Um, because... <laughs> They are incredible. And everybody should know that they actually started in Cuba, New Mexico. And let me tell you, since my family's from up north Cuba and Guyana area, we were there all the time. I'd spend summers there and I get to eat their fried spinach. If you ever go to help Bruno's, they're the only ones I know that do fried spinach. It's incredible. Their food is delicious. And I'm just super excited to have them. They've been members for about a decade or more. And uh, Hazel, good luck. I know you had to adapt and change during COVID. You're reopened. We're here to support. And let me tell you, during COVID, El Bruno's hosted uh, a One Room at a Night initiative. I believe they, they hosted a vacation, staycation for us. Um, they're still doing the best that they can. They're still doing that. It's a great place to go eat. It's a beautiful space. And so again, shout out to the Herrera family. We're super excited that you guys are uh, part of our family for so long. Next, Sunny 505. Now, Sunny 505 is Joni Griffin. So recently, Joni was awarded um, a, a, an incredible award for the work that she did during COVID. You know, she was instrumental in getting information to the hands of the right people at the right time. She is um, advertising and PR and does an incredible job of getting the work out there. And last year, when we announced that we were going to do the space industry, you know, we talked to Sunny, uh, I mean, we talked to Joni immediately with Sunny 505 because, um, you know, she has some very large clients and very big clients. And uh, she's able to really connect the dots, uh, not just for us, but for the community. And if you guys are needing somebody to really support the business and what you do and help you with PR and, uh, you know, marketing, whatever it may be, you need to get in touch with Joni and team. They're a pretty incredible group. And uh, we're very proud to have her. She's been with us for about a decade. And so uh, thank you to Joni. And uh, we look forward to seeing you a lot this year. And uh, last but not least, what was that? Other than all shout out, she's actually helping with the 125th anniversary from it all this year <laughs> and doing a bunch of stuff for them. So Sunny 505, Joe, thank you so much. <laughs> wow. Hey, I'm not sure about all this Manal graduate thing going on. I, John, I don't know. I'm going to have to <laughs> shout out my high school here in a minute. <laughs> We're small with a big reach everywhere. I've been to New York and met Manal people and was like, really? okay, here we go. But yeah, wow. no, I just, I love that, you know, the community, especially around here just supports each other and sunny 505 supports a lot of people but happy that she's helping them all this year 
Yeah, well, uh, I love the little chat that's going on on our webinar. And um, yeah, these are the Hispanic Heritage Awards, not the Manal Awards. I just want everybody to know that. <laughs> oh, gee, you know, I'm proud that Manal's involved now. <laughs> So uh, last but not least, we have an all-women law firm, uh, Preg Preg Preginzer? Preginzer, Basinger, Thank Weidman, you. and Sale, yeah. Preginzer, Basinger, Weidman, and Sale. Okay, there we go. Now, what I know about them is as I was looking up the information, because again, we're going to go over how the nominations work right here in just a minute, but I don't always know everybody that gets nominated. But what I do know is I can go back and look in comments. I can check to see what they've done. And let's face it. Who was more busy than an all-women law firm during COVID? I mean, come on. And so um, they've been they've been about four or five years with the chamber. Um, and so I, I I think that it is great that when you see women come together and and work together. You know, women don't always work well together, and it's so exciting to see them work together and really build, really push hard on the things that are important. And supporting the community during COVID is a really, really big thing. And so I think that it's important that we recognize that we recognize them. You can find their bio and all their information in the voting site. Um, this is a great category this year. It's just really fun to recognize women doing great things in the community while raising kids, while going to soccer games, while homeschooling, we'll keep in line. while homeschooling, while cooking and cleaning. And don't get me wrong, men are doing that now too, but give a little shout out to the girlies. So hey, uh, Shannon for PBWS uh, real quick. They are a sponsor for the Alzheimer's walk this year. Oh, there you go. They're doing like huge things with that. They're always donating their time and money to charitable organizations here. So I'm excited to be part of that. I'm not much of a walker, so I'll be a crawler that day. But (laughs) oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, fantastic. Well, good luck to all the nominees in this category. Who do we got next? See, I knew it was going to take a little while because there's so much to say. We're not even touching base on what everybody does, you know, but I know we're nearing the end because I can tell by the topics of the categories. So I think we got one more after this. Our new business of the year. Okay. This is, again, I said it already, one of my favorite categories because of the fact that this is the group that is so engaged. These, because they're new businesses, they reach out. They're like, I need, I need help. I, I need, what do I need to do? They participate, they attend events, they host events. This is such a lively group. And so I want to say thank you so much to Facebook, who is our official category sponsor this year of new business. Now, Facebook is not new, but Facebook is new to New Mexico. And Facebook has agreed to support this uh, as our category sponsor this year. So a big shout out to the team at Facebook. We appreciate your partnership working with us on our education and the important programs that we do in the community for small businesses. So thank you so much. So the nominees for the new business of the year are Modern Alchemist Compounding Pharmacy, the Chamoy Bar, and Bourbon and Boots. So I know y'all have something to say about everybody on this category. So I'm just going to kind of start a little bit. Um, First, I want to talk about Modern Alchemist. So at the heat of COVID, here you are trying to figure out who you can partner with to send your staff to get tested on a regular basis. And hey, I need that test in two hours. And where am I going to go for rapid testing? And how am I going to get a deal? And what am I going to do? And oh my goodness, and boom, out of the blue falls Navid and his team at Modern Alchemist. Um, you know, things happen for a reason. They have a great service. You drive up, they give you the test. In a couple hours, you get your results. They tried to do it as gentle as possible, considering the test. They were, they were gentle. They were. And what I love is they come to your car. You don't even have to go inside. They come right out to your car, all suited up. They get you everything. It was just super fast. We've been so lucky to have them as part of our COVID team and working hard to help those, the, what we needed to do to be safe here at the chamber for our staff and our, and in our uh, uh, members that come to visit us. So shout out to you guys for opening Uh, pushing hard during COVID, building during COVID, coming up with solutions to make people feel safe by not having to get out of their cars and really catering to the public um, during this time. And I I just kudos to you. um, Speaking of catering, they actually uh, help people and pets. (laughs) So beyond the COVID aspect, they actually create their own uh, 
their own vitamins and stuff for people uh, that fit their, that customized to their body type. And they do that for pets as well. I did. Well, and they're a compounding. Thank you for bringing that. See what I mean? I get all excited about what we do with them. And I forget they're a compounding pharmacy. So if you are somebody that lives with pain, if you are somebody, if you have a pet with pain, you need to reach out, set an appointment, go visit them. They will make, they will put together a compound that works specific for you. So great way of putting important. it. Yes. Yes. So, wow, this next group, this next foursome, these incredible ladies known as the Lobo sisters, um, uh, Alejandra and team, uh, the Chamoy Bar. So I have to tell you, you know, they've been, they've been about a year or so uh, with the chamber, but it was so funny because we met them from the beautiful micheladas and the different um, drinks that they were doing. And man, they started off, they, they got in here and they have not stopped. They have come to every event. They have supported every event. They have donated. They have given us whatever we have needed to support our events. Um, what a cool concept. And what I want to say is their parent company is Via Lobos Food Distribution. And a lot of people that are, you put the, the, the chamoy, which is fruit that's been, you know, it's a mixture, it's ground up and you kind of put your your glass on it and then you can put like your your toppings like tahine or salt or graham crackers or whatever it is that you want to put on your drink and they actually distribute this they make sell and distribute this so uh you know Bill Lobo sisters I'm gonna tell you gotta get you in that trade program right now uh, but they are a new business uh, uh less than two years old and they are hitting Albuquerque like nobody's business they are coming out, bursting on the streets. They're at the Albuquerque Walk every Friday. They're doing events with the city. They're moving um, quickly in the growth of their business. Now, I know you guys, um, we've seen them at all the events. Um, uh, Joey, we couldn't pull you away at the golf tournament because they have delicious aguas frescas. They were at our hiring events. They were really been everywhere. So it's a, are. And it was a hot summer, so it was a good time to have them around. Yeah, I was friendly. I have my, my signature cup that they gave me, and uh, it, it looks like a terracotta pot. And uh, we're just excited that they're part of this category. Mia Lobo's family, congratulations. Uh, so the third nominee in this category, wow, talk about a friend and supporter of the chamber. Bourbon and Boots, Rich, Baca, and team. Let me tell you, you know, we did a ribbon cutting for Rich right before COVID. I literally think it was like the week, like four or five days before COVID hit. It was that close. They were shut down. And during the time that they were shut down until very recently, he continued to support the chamber. He, he supported you know, golf tournaments and Hispanic heritage events and networking events. And even though he wasn't open, he was somebody that we could count on for support. We spoke regularly, hoping that he was going to get his business open downtown. And he finally decided to open a kitchen because he had to have a kitchen <coughs> to be open because he was considered a bar or a, a club. And so he made the investment in his community downtown to put in that kitchen. I hope you guys all go and get a, a burger and some chicken and a salad or whatever you want. He has delicious food at Bourbon and Boots downtown. It's a great place to hang out. They're a restaurant. They are uh, friendly to, to everybody. And it's just a really great, um, I guess you could say process that he's been through with a smile on his face and really blames nobody. He just works hard to make sure that he has continued to be the best new business he could be for the downtown economic development space. And uh, Joey, I think we just recently did an event with him. Yeah, we did. We did a ribbon cutting in which introduced us to uh, the Biscratis that we had there. And it's one of our most successful Biscratis. Uh, he was great. Everybody had a good time. That's just, I've been there a couple of times too. I'm a country fan, so oh, we go. If I can go line count. dance and, you know, make a fool of myself. I'm definitely going there. That's the best place to go to in Albuquerque for that. But the wings are the best. I 100% agree with Angelique. <laughs> well, and I'm going to tell you, if you can't find us, you might sneak down to, uh, you know, Bourbon and Boots. That's where we like to have lunch sometimes. <laughs> we do it on the DL. Um, I think we're down to our last category. I could be wrong. Nope, we are. It's our small business of the year. Uh, this is sponsored and brought to us by Brycon. So I have to tell you, 
Phil Casaus and team, amazing. Brycon is, I can't even tell you, an incredible supporter of the chamber, not just financially being on our board, on executive committee, and really, really helping us with with, you know, uh, support that we need. Um, sometimes you just need a business owner to be able to tell you what it's like to be in their shoes. And um, we are so thankful to learn from them, be inspired from them. So thank you, Brycon, um, for quality, precision, and purpose. And we are excited to have you as part of our purpose. So thank you, Phil and team. The small business nominees of the year are Bob's Burgers, Chisholm Trail RV, and HHC Supply, that's their new branding. So uh, Joey, there's, you know, we're gonna keep this short, but we wanna make sure that we get it all in. Um, I have to tell you, Bob's Burgers, the Solace family, there is nothing else to say but Bob's Burgers. And what really struck me is during COVID that they were remodeling, opening locations. They were continuing to figure out how to keep their staff employed. And that is such an important part of recovery and what we, what we had to do during this time, um, increasing drive up uh, uh, capabilities and takeout capabilities and come on to the home of the Ranchero Burger and the taquitos and the Ranchero sauce. And oh my God. The apple bites, and I mean, let's go on and on. I live down the street from Bob's Burgers, you know, the taco burger. But besides that, the support they have in the community and the support they give in the community. And Joey, you live by them too. <laughs> I do. And it's always my girlfriend every Tuesday. That's the person she says, let's go there. Even if taco there's burger Tuesday. <laughs> yep. If there's 13 people in line, we're the 14th, and it's always a fun hour long car wait, but it's worth it. So congratulations to the Solace family. They've been members over 20 years with the chamber. That tells you how much they support small business in our community. Um, uh, definitely a legacy member. I want to thank them again. So, wow, I don't know what to say about this next one, Chisholm Trail RV. You know, uh, Aaron Chisholm, wow, 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 wow. Um, I, I just don't know off the top of my head somebody that has done more during COVID, um, you know, when, when we shut down, she opened up and she went into full action. You know, she packed her trailers full of food, drove them out to all four corners of the state. Um, she was Northeast, Southeast, Southwest, wherever she went, she was collecting food. She was reaching out, getting donations, toilet paper, all the supplies we needed to the elderly, the tribal entities, the places and people that couldn't otherwise get access. And it was absolutely uh, incredible um, to have Erin as part of Erin's been recognized nationwide. She's been recognized locally in so many different magazines, TV stories for the work that she does. She's a very, very giving individual. And we are very, very proud to have her as part of our membership and as part of her constant giving, sponsoring, supporting um, with what we do. And, uh, you know, I I'll tell you, Joey, she's an incredible woman. She really is. And her golf tournament was a lot of fun. It was their first uh, time doing it. We had a great time. But even that event was tailored towards helping the community. It was. Um, everything she does is just has her stamp on. I'm just here to help New Mexico. I mean, and that's kind of what we stand for. So she she's awesome to have. Yep, 100% of our proceeds went to her nonprofits that she supports. And, and again, a, incredible work uh, when you can pack your trailers and uh, fill them with food and take and money donate. out of your pocket and donate it. It's just, it blows my mind. So kudos uh, to, to Chisholm Trail RV for all the incredible work you do in the community. Now, I have to tell you this last one. HHC Supply, I remember riding my bicycle when I was 10 and 12 years old through Hacienda Home Center, HHC, Hacienda Home Center off of 4th in, in Ranchitos. <laughs> and I'd go in and I'd buy candy and get keys made and, you know, uh, but they have since evolved and they are now HHC Supply. And, um, you know, we have enjoyed working with them um, over the past year, especially with construction and the height of what was happening during COVID and uh, the, the ways that we were able to connect. So Joey, please tell us. Well, and one thing they did too, is we always uh, ask our members when we sign them up and um, get involved as much as you can. And that was the first thing that they did over there. Uh, Joe Sanchez and Felina have been really involved to the point to where they got a lot of the government contracts that were out there. They're working with uh, the base a lot. That's, you know, 
Um, they use our facilities like we want our members to do, and they bring people from the base here to showcase us as well as do their, uh, I think they were doing some type of product demonstration last time for paint. And uh, they're just, they're a great place. If you are looking to support local and you're looking to get your supplies for construction, uh, landscaping, anything like that, HHC Supply is the way to go for sure. Well, we want to thank everybody nominated, not just in this category, but in all of our categories. Um, before we close up, just a couple of things. The night of the awards, we do have some special awardees. We have our Small Business Person of the Year that we have been awarding for well over 35 years here at the Chamber, which is a selection that's done uh, by our president. We also have um, our, um, our um, uh, Legacy Award. We also have our President's Awardees. Um, and we also have our Lifetime Membership Awards. We have two members, Joey that are celebrating 40 years with the chamber that will be recognized uh, on October 15th. And so I, I really can't say enough. Uh, voting is about to go live. There will be a, a link inside of this social media post. We wanted to share with you just a little bit, enough to give you a nugget of who they are and what they do for the community. Um, you know, there's so many businesses out there that have supported us this year, but these were the ones that were extremely deserving. And you know how we know that? Because they were nominated. And the way the nominations work for future, future uh, reference, and also because you're already calling in to nominate for next year, um, you can nominate uh, one of three ways. You can send an email, and all you have to say is, I'd like to nominate Joe Blow Business uh, for a Hispanic Heritage Award. Um, that spreadsheet has already begun for 2022. There is 10 categories. They are listed on the website. They were listed here in this webinar. They're listed in the email that's about to be sent to you. You can find them out and you can say I want to nominate in this category. There's a big old whiteboard that sits inside of the um, marketing department where we track it all year round and we cut it off at the beginning of July, about July 1, right after the 4th of July, somewhere in there. So we can start processing. Um, most votes wins basically is what it is. So you might be nominated, but if you only have one or two nominations and somebody else has 10 or 12, we're going to move those ones forward. After they've been uh, vetted to make sure that they're members and they are current, then from there they go on to our base basic spreadsheet and they are reached out to, we let them know of their nomination and the voting begins. The voting is going live as we speak. Um, and the way that it works is you get one vote per day per email for category. So Joey, technically you could go in and vote 10 times today and 10 times tomorrow and 10 times or whatever it is, nine times, I'm sorry, because our 10th award is <coughs> pre-picked, but nine times daily, or you can vote for just one. You don't have to vote for all of them. In the end, the most votes wins. And we will know that um, at on, uh, you know, the morning of September 16th, because voting ends at 1159 on uh, September 15th, which I believe is a Wednesday. And so it's very, very important that you share with everybody, if you are a nominee, if you are a friend or a patron of any of these businesses and you want to help them out, post their special link that you'll find inside the voting platform. You can copy and paste that link into yours and say, oh, I love to patron Joe Blow Restaurant, help support him, or I use this service, help support them. The most votes wins. Now, I don't know, I could be wrong, Angelique will probably correct me, but I know we had about 30, 40, somewhere thousand votes last time. So, um, uh, you know, so to New Mexico, to Albuquerque, get out there and vote. Show these businesses you support them. Show them that you appreciate what they're doing inside the community and what they do for us here at the Hispano. And um, I think that that will go a long way, Joey. No, absolutely. And uh, for uh, there was a lot of nominations. We want people to know that. Um, we were lucky to have this elite group here that uh, we're going to be presenting to you, but I, that makes me more excited for the future because looking at all the nominations we had, everybody who's eligible, and the community is just by, uh, coming together right now and showing us greatness. So we appreciate all of our members for doing what you do. We're excited to highlight everybody that we mentioned today. And uh, going forward, I, I can't wait for the future because these, these people are leading the charge, obviously. 
Um, well, and thank you for saying that, Joy, because they are, they're leading the economic recovery. They are not sitting by the wayside. <clears throat> they are doing big things in the community. You can reach out to them if you're going to patron their services, their stores, their restaurants, their businesses between now and October 15th. Congratulate them. Say, hey, I heard you're up for a nomination. I'll vote for you. Let them know that you are supporting them. They have given so much back during this past year and for the decades that some of them have uh, taken to build their business and that little bit of pat on the back and thank you goes a long yeah. way and let that be you know something that pushes everyone for next year uh, you know knowing what they've done that just means a competition it's going to be there for next year these are awards obviously but you know everyone's out there doing their best and so we thank everybody who was nominated but these uh, i'm excited for october 15th like i said i've never been a part of it um i am moving my trip back a little bit so I can be a part of it. One day, Joey, come on, one day. <laughs> it's, a, it's a big one day, but I'm excited to be a part of it. I'm excited to rub uh, albums with everybody and just celebrate. Uh, we deserve this celebration. Albuquerque deserves this celebration. So we do. We need, we need this celebration. We need to reopen. We need to be thanking our businesses for keeping us moving in the, in the area of recovery and economic recovery after COVID. October 15th, Hotel Albuquerque, 6 p.m. cocktail, 7 p.m. dinner and awards, 9 p.m. after party. We will see you all there. Tickets on sale. Voting is live. Emails are going out as we speak. Copy those links. Reach out to us at 842-9003. Ask for Joey or Angelique if you have any questions. If you are a nominee, ask for B. She'll help you walk through your questions. And in the meantime, we're going to be spending the next six weeks focusing on Hispanic Heritage Awards and making sure that those businesses and sponsors are recognized for their support. You all have a wonderful day. I know we're a little over an hour, but we're so excited and uh, we can't wait to see you soon. Happy Hispanic Heritage Month, September 15th through October 15th. We will see you all soon. Bye-bye, everybody.